Howdy. Did you know that Chris has a save file? Chris's save file appears the very first time you save the game, and it's a little odd, because in Undertale, the save file was empty by default. At first, I figured this just meant that Chris had been to the Dark World before, which would make sense if you imagine that going to the Dark World is a little bit like playing a game with your friends, until I realized that when you start Chapter 2, Chris has a save file here, too. This isn't just something that occurs on a blank save file either. This is how it looks when I've loaded in from my Chapter 1 save data. Does that mean Chris, somehow, saved the game between chapters? But, the closet was locked at the end of Chapter 1, so how did they find a save point? Unless, can Chris save in the light world? Let's use debug mode and try it out, just to see what happens. Oh wow, that is interesting. When you save in the dark world, it uses the player's name, but saving in the light world will always use Chris's name. I wonder if this is intentional. The king does call Chris, Lightbringer, after all. It may be that Chris has more power over the save file while they're in the light world. This would also explain why Chris is able to remove their soul there and make choices without us. Perhaps Chris is stronger in the light, while we are stronger in the dark. That said, I must admit, while the game does have a script specifically for saving in the light world, if you do this in chapter 2, the script gets kinda buggy. You can also start chapter 2 without any save data at all, which will prompt the game to provide a pre-made save file for you, and it's interesting, because it seems like the default choices might actually be the sort of choices Chris would go for. Their favorite color is red, the color of their soul. Favorite flavor is sweets, when we know Chris likes chocolates, pies, cakes, and apples. And, most oddly, when they choose to give the vessel a gift, they actually choose mine, the second option, instead of the first option of kindness. Notably, a lot of the other options here are things Chris seems to lack, such as a voice and ambition, which checks out with the portrait the overworld paints of Chris before the player shows up. But what's even more interesting is your equipment. In general, it seems like the player of this save file makes a straight beeline for the exit, so they don't help or talk to any of the NPCs along the way. This actually does seem to be in line with Chris's typical behavior, as speaking with Noel in the light world will reveal that Chris isn't a very social person and doesn't often interact with others. But for some reason, despite having no items, no weapons, and nothing from the shops except for the basic amber cards, Chris did pick up the white ribbon and equipped it to Ralsei. That, or Ralsei went back for it, I'm not sure which is harder to believe, given the mixed messages Chris gives regarding Ralsei. It is very odd, though, since the white ribbon certainly isn't a key item, and the player could easily miss it or sell it on accident as they get better gear. So why pick up this one, of all things? I know I've theorized that this ribbon probably belonged to Des, or at the very least Noel. But, the dice brace also seems to be giving the player a hint about that plotline, and the iron shackles are right there. Really, Chris? Actually, you know what's more weird than Chris having a save file? Chris having three save files. That's right, if you start up Chapter 2 with no data of any sort, either from Chapter 1 or Chapter 2, then instead of saving into a new file, you get to choose which of Chris's three saves you want to overwrite. Strangely, once you've done this, the other two files blank out as well. Almost like. Gasp. What if Toby needs the player to overwrite Chris's save file? What if this is a plot point later, like at the end of Undertale, when it says, you try to reach your save file, and Toby has to rewrite that entire cutscene if you haven't saved the game before that point? We know this isn't just because Toby lacks a placeholder script to put here either, as erasing a save file actually erases Chris's saves too, changing the names in both Chapter 1 and Chapter 2, from Chris to Empty. He didn't just import this script either. He wrote this out separately for both chapters to make sure that Chris would always have a save file until you erase it. Why would Toby put so much extra attention into such an obscure detail here if it wasn't leading up to something? I believe Chris can save in the light world at will. I believe they saved once before the game even started, during the inaccessible Chapter 0, and then once again, between Chapter 1 and Chapter 2. And, I believe all this extra attention to detail was, at the very least, foreshadowing for that revelation. But if that's the case, this still leaves us with one mystery. 
When you begin Chapter 2 from a Chapter 1 save file, it says that your name is Chris since Chapter 1 or whatever chapter you happen to actually start on. But that raises a few questions. Does this mean that Chris was not Chris before we showed up? Or is this telling us that we, the player, have been Chris since Chapter 1? The variable for this is named Chris Preservation Society. But is it actually somehow preserving Chris? Or is this just a joke name? I don't. Wait, why is there a line of code here checking how long the name of my character is in the light world? This isn't a variable that changes. The main character in the light world is always named Chris. And even if it wasn't, why would you need to add question marks to the light world's menu screen if the name of the player character is seven characters long or longer? Is this foretelling that we're going to be playing as a character in the light world other than Chris? Who? Um, let's see. More than seven characters, so it can't be Asriel, or Ralph Say, nor Susie, nor Lancer. And before you ask, no, it's not Gaster. Gaster is six letters long. This is literally the one and only mystery we have that cannot be answered with Gaster. And darn it, I'm going to keep it that way. It could still be him if we spell it like, no. Let's see. Burger Pants, Jockington, Napstablook, Metaton, Papyrus. December? Oh, those last three actually fit the naming box like a glove. Okay everyone, place your bets now. Will the next playable character in the light world be Papyrus? December? Or is there an even better choice I haven't thought of yet? Let me know down in the comments. And until next time. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more Hyperlink Blocked. Madam what? <laughs>
Oh! 